Imagine confiding your deepest fears and anxieties not to a person, but to an AI. Now imagine that AI actually making you feel better, way better. We're talking a 64% reduction in depression symptoms. Sounds like sci-fi, right? Well, welcome to the future of mental health care. It's here, it's effective, and it's raising some big questions about the future of our minds. Hey there, brainiacs and mental health mavens. Theodore here, and boy, do we have a mind bender for you today. We're diving deep into the world of AI and mental health. You know, where silicon meets serotonin. We've got the inside scoop on how these digital docs are revolutionizing therapy, making it more accessible than ever. But don't worry, we're not just drinking the AI Kool-Aid. We're asking the tough questions too. So buckle up your neurons, folks. It's time to explore the brave new world of AI-powered mental health care. Get this. So, you know how we're always hearing about AI taking over the world? Right. Well, it turns out one of the places that's making a real difference is in the world of mental health. Yeah. And we're not talking about some, like, far-off future here. This is already happening. It really is. We've got all these articles here from Therapedia, Psychology Today, even companies like Ognito, who are really on the cutting edge of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And they all point to the same thing. Mm -hmm. AI is absolutely revolutionizing how we approach and think about mental well-being. It's remarkable, really. We've got this whole stack of articles here, and it's just like everywhere you look. Yeah, it's not just some like sci-fi concept anymore. It's like a potential lifeline for people who need support. Totally. And even just skimming these articles, like the numbers are astounding. Did you see this? Searches for mental health AI chatbot are up 84%. That's huge. It speaks to a real need, don't you think? I, I mean, yeah. traditional therapy, it can be a challenge. Cost, stigma, finding the right therapist. AI chatbots are really, um, they're lowering those barriers for a lot of people. For sure. Imagine getting support right from your phone any time of day or night. It's incredible. It is. It's like having a therapist on speed dial. But without the awkward small talk. Right. right. That... Whoa, hold up a sec. Did you catch that? We're talking about AI chatbots that can actually reduce depression symptoms by 64%. That's not just a little improvement, that's a game changer. But here's the kicker. These AI therapists don't need sleep, don't take vacations, and are available 24-7. It's like having a therapist in your pocket, always ready to listen. You know, I wonder, do people find it easier to open up to an AI? Maybe there's something about talking to a non-judgmental algorithm that makes folks more willing to share their deepest thoughts. Mind-blowing. But seriously, though, how do these chatbots even work? Are they just spitting out canned responses? Or is there, like, real intelligence behind them? So, okay, this is where it gets really cool. They use something called natural language processing. Okay. NLP, for short. Got it to understand what the user is saying. And I mean, really understand. Sure. Like they can pick up on those emotional cues, analyze language patterns. Yeah. They can even adapt their responses based on what you need specifically. Wait, hold on. So they actually learn and evolve the more you interact with them. Yeah, exactly. It's not just a one size fits all approach. It's personalized. We're talking about algorithms that can tailor coping strategies, suggest therapeutic exercises, even provide insights based on like your history with it. Okay, that's seriously impressive. Right. It's like having a mental health coach in your pocket, mm -hmm. available 24 seven. No wonder people are like searching for these things like crazy. Yeah. But chatbots aren't the only thing. We're also seeing this whole explosion of these mental health apps powered by AI. Absolutely, and the growth is staggering. Yeah. One article cited a 143% surge in searches for mental health AI app. Wow. These apps go way beyond what chatbots can do. They tap into data analysis to create these personalized care plans. Okay, so break that down for me a little bit. What kind of data are we even talking about? Well, think about all the information your phone collects already. Your sleep patterns, your activity levels, your social media use. Okay. These apps can analyze that data along with your self-reported mood, your symptoms, to create this like 
holistic picture of your mental well-being. And then from there, it can recommend specific activities, resources, and even connect you with a human therapist if needed. So it's like having a personal mental health assistant. Yes. Constantly monitoring your well-being, and it's like nudging you towards healthier habits or interventions when you need them most. Exactly. And it gets even more fascinating. We're on the cusp of apps that can detect your mood in real time just by analyzing your voice or your facial expression. Okay, let's break this down. We're not just talking about some fancy mood tracker here. These AI systems are using some seriously advanced tech, natural language processing, machine learning, the works. They're analyzing your words, your tone, even your typing speed to get a read on your mental state. It's like having a super intelligent, hyper observant therapist who remembers everything you've ever said. Creepy or cool, I'll let you decide. Get out of here. So it'll know before I do. Imagine an app senses you're having a stressful day and suggests a quick meditation exercise before you even realize you need it. Okay, that's that's like next level stuff. Right. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I've been dying to ask you about this. AI mental health assistance. Okay. That search term alone saw a 1900% increase. That's not a typo. That's wild. That is a full-blown explosion of interest. So what are these assistants? How are they different from chatbots or apps? So think of them as the next evolution. All right. Chatbots, they offer targeted support. Apps, they provide these personalized plans. Yeah. AI assistants are designed for the long haul. Okay. They continuously learn from your data, adapt their strategies to provide really customized care. So they're like your own personal mental health sidekick, always learning and evolving alongside you. Yes. They can track patterns, they can analyze your progress, and they can even coordinate with human therapists to provide seamless, integrated care. Wow. This is where we see the true potential of AI, I think. Not as a replacement, but as a powerful tool to enhance and expand access to mental health care. That's incredible. And it's not just individuals that are catching on to this. Mm. Businesses are also investing heavily in AI-powered mental health solutions for their employees. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense, right? Oh, yeah. They're realizing that supporting their employees' mental well-being isn't just the right thing to do. It's good for business. Well, and one of our articles even highlighted a 50% jump in searches for mental health aid jobs, which I thought was really fascinating. Yeah, when employees have access to mental health resources, whether it's virtual therapy, stress reduction programs, or even just a listening ear, sure. they tend to be happier, healthier, and more productive. It's like they say, mm. a happy worker is a productive worker. Exactly. And now AI is making it easier than ever to create that supportive environment for teams. Yeah. This is all incredibly promising, but um, I'm also kind of wondering about like the p potential downsides. So I think we need to unpack those a little bit as we kind of delve deeper into this AI revolution. Absolutely. Every technological advancement comes with its own set of ch challenges Yeah, and considerations. We'll dive into those in just a bit. It's interesting, right? We always think about AI as like this cold and calculating force. Yeah. But when it comes to mental health, it could be the thing that unlocks a deeper level of human connection. Okay. Now that's an interesting take. How so? Well, think about it. What if instead of replacing human therapists, AI frees them up to focus on the stuff that only humans can do, like the empathy, really listening, you know, those nuances that build a real bond. Those are things that AI might never replicate. And honestly, that's a good thing. So it's not about replacing humans. Mm -hmm. It's more like giving them the tools to be even more human in their approach. Exactly. Finding that sweet spot where the technology helps not competes with human expertise. Let's be real. I mean, even with all these potential benefits, I'm sure some people are still a little wary about AI getting involved in something as personal as mental health. I know I have my moments. Oh, for sure. Trust is key in any kind of therapeutic relationship, and that includes AI. Transparency is huge here. People need to know how this stuff works, what data is collected, how it's used. For sure. Like anything else, trust has to be earned. You don't <laughs> just get it. But, you know, thinking about this whole AI revolution, it really struck me how it could change the game when it comes to accessibility. You know the mental health system right now. Yeah. It's failing a lot of people. Yeah. It's expensive. There are these crazy wait lists. And the stigma, it's still out there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's where AI has the potential to really change things. Like, imagine a world where anyone, anywhere, no matter how much money they make or what their insurance is like, can get quality help right from their phones. 
That would be huge. Mm. Breaking down those barriers and making mental health support as easy as like ordering something online. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not that easy, but you get what I'm saying. I do. I do. It's a powerful thought. But let's be real. Technology alone won't fix everything. We're still going to have to deal with poverty, discrimination, and all those other things that impact access to these resources. But it can definitely be a useful tool to work towards a more equitable and just system. A tool that can help us identify risks, maybe intervene sooner, and just provide better and more personalized treatment options. Yeah. But like any tool, it all comes down to how we use it, right? 100%. We've got to be mindful of the potential downsides while also being optimistic about what we can achieve. And at the core of it all, you know, we have to keep that human element front and center. Absolutely. So we have AI analyzing moods, tracking sleep, even suggesting ways to cope. But it's that human to human connection, the empathy and understanding that makes all the difference. AI might build the bridge, but it's up to us to cross it together. Well said. Well said. It really makes you think, what would those pioneers of mental health care think about all of this? Right. The ones who really paved the way for what we have today. What would they say about this whole AI revolution? I feel like they'd be amazed, you know, at how far we've come and excited about the possibilities. Because at the heart of it, trying to understand and support the human mind has always been about innovation. Now, I know what you're thinking. Theodore, are robots really going to replace human therapists? Well... Not so fast. This isn't an either-or situation. Think of AI as a powerful tool in the mental health toolkit, not the whole toolbox. It's about expanding access, providing support between sessions, maybe even catching issues before they become crises. The human touch in therapy, that's not going anywhere. We're just giving it a high-tech helping hand. AI is just the next chapter in the story. A story that's still being written. Yeah. And one that we're all helping to write. Okay, but we can't shy away from the big question here. What about the fear that AI is going to replace therapists altogether? It's definitely valid, especially with all those sci-fi movies, right? Oh, tell me about it. Yeah. You know that classic trope where robots become self-aware and then suddenly we're all living in a digital nightmare? I mean, it's a classic fear of the unknown, blown totally out of proportion by Hollywood. Exactly. But in reality, it's a lot more nuanced than that. It's not about replacing. It's about making things better, working with AI, not against it. I like that working with it. Mm -hmm. Because let's be real, there are always going to be people who just prefer that human connection, that traditional therapy setting. And that's okay. Absolutely. AI isn't a one size fits all kind of thing. It's about having choices, more ways to get help. It's about empowering people to figure out what works for them. That makes a lot of sense. Huh. But even if AI doesn't replace therapists, couldn't it still lead to job losses in that field? Like, what happens when you've got one AI platform that can do the work of, let's say, 10 therapists? That's a really good point, and it's something that we need to be talking about. But I think it's important to remember that whenever we see new technologies, they change the job market. Right, like the printing press or cars or even the Internet. Mm. Each of those things totally changed how we work. Exactly. And a lot of times, those big shifts actually created new jobs and opportunities that didn't even exist before. So... I think we'll see the same thing with AI and mental health. So we don't need to be afraid of it. We can see it as a chance to like redefine what those roles in the mental health field look like. Maybe even create new jobs and encourage more innovation. It's about adapting, not running away. You got it. We might even see more people who are into technology being drawn to mental health as a career. You know, yeah. people who might not have considered that path before. Totally. It's about getting different fields to work together, bringing all the best minds from tech healthcare, social work, to build a better future for mental health. And honestly, I'm getting kind of excited just thinking about what that could look like. Me too. But let's not forget, there's still some real challenges when it comes to AI and mental health. Data privacy is a big one. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're but... talking about people's most personal information. There's no room for mistakes when it comes to keeping that safe. You're right. We need strong regulations in place. And I mean ironclad. We need to protect people's rights, be really open about how things work, and hold those companies accountable. And these regulations, they need input from everyone, not just developers and healthcare people. We need ethicists, privacy pros, and most importantly, people who actually live with mental health challenges to have a voice. Absolutely. Everyone needs to be at the table to make sure that human well-being comes first. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. So we've gone over a lot here. AI's potential to give more people access to care, make human connections stronger, even create new jobs. 
but we've also talked about the risks and how important it is to be careful. It's a lot to think about. It really is. I think the best thing we can do right now is stay informed, keep asking those tough questions, and really be thoughtful about how we want to see AI and mental health evolve together. Because this isn't just some abstract tech debate, right? This is about how we're going to take care of our minds, our well-being as people. And that's something we should all be approaching with both you know, wisdom and compassion. Wow. I mean, we have really gone deep on AI and mental health today. We really have. It's really got me thinking. Yeah. We talked about the potential, the mm. challenges. I mean, we even talked about what those old school therapy pioneers would think about all of this. It's been quite the journey, for sure. It has. But before we wrap up here, I'm really curious. Yeah. What's really stood out to you through all of this? Honestly, I think for me, it's the speed of it all. Yeah. Like, it's just crazy how a few years ago, this was barely even a thing. Right. And now it feels like we're on the verge of this, like, mental health care revolution. That's true. It's happening so fast. And you know what that speaks to? The need for solutions. Oh, absolutely. Like those skyrocketing search terms we talked about. Yeah. That tells me people are desperate for something different. For sure. Something accessible, affordable. Yeah. And they're looking to AI to provide it. Yeah. It's like AI is stepping in to fill this void mm. where traditional methods just haven't been able to, you know. And it's not even just about like convenience either. Right. It's about finally breaking down all those barriers. Yeah. Cost, stigma, location, mm. all the things that stop people from actually getting help. Exactly. It's about making mental health care accessible to everybody. Yes. Democratizing it. Yes. That's the word. Making it available to anyone, anywhere, at any time. Exactly. But we've got to be careful too. Right. Right. Of course. You can't just get swept up in the excitement without acknowledging the potential downsides. Yeah, for sure. Data privacy, algorithmic bias. Oh, yeah. That human connection. Huge. Those are all things we need to be very aware of as we explore this new frontier. Yeah. We have to be really careful, you're right. right. We can't just hand over the reins to AI and hope for the best. Right. We've got to ask the tough questions and make sure these companies are being transparent. Exactly. And you know what? It's not enough for just us to be having this conversation. The people who need to be heard the most are the ones with lived experience. It's 100%. They're the ones who know what it's really like to navigate the mental health system. They're the ones who are going to be using these tools. Exactly. So they need to be involved in shaping how they're designed and used. Yeah. We can't let AI become just another barrier for them. For sure. It's got to be a tool that actually helps. Absolutely. That makes their lives better, not worse. Mm -hmm. This is about putting people first, mm. you know? Humanity before technology. I like that. I really think this starts with how we view mental health in the first place. Okay. It shouldn't be something we're ashamed of or afraid to talk about. Mm. It's not just about like fixing something that's broken. Right. It's about taking care of ourselves. Absolutely. Prioritizing our mental well-being just like we do our physical health. I love that. And I think AI can help us get there. For sure. It can definitely be a tool for that. Yeah. Imagine a world where we're encouraged to be proactive about our mental health, to reach out for help before things hit a crisis point. A hundred percent, that's the dream. It is. And I really believe AI can help make that a reality. Me too, me too. It's a powerful tool, we just have to use it wisely. Couldn't have said it better myself. So what's next? Where do we go from here? It, it's hard to say for sure, but AI is gonna continue to impact how we think about mental health. Oh, 100%. And I think that's something worth thinking about. Yeah. How do you see AI shaping your own mental health journey in the future? It's a really good question. It's not something we can just ignore, you know? Yeah. We need to be active participants in shaping this future. Yeah, you're right. Because it's our future. Well, on that note, I think it's time to wrap up this episode of The Deep Dive. This was a great conversation. It really was. It's definitely given us all a lot to think about. For sure, for sure. A huge thank you to everyone for joining us on this exploration of AI and the future of mental well-being. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and most importantly, take care of yourselves and each other. Folks, we've taken quite the journey through the Silicon Valleys of the mind today. From AI chatbots that can put a serious dent in depression, 
to the ethical minefield of entrusting our deepest thoughts to algorithms. It's clear that AI is set to play a massive role in the future of mental health care. But remember, technology is just a tool. It's how we use it that counts. As we wrap up, I want you to think, how do you see AI fitting into your mental health journey? Are you ready to open up to a robot therapist? Whatever your thoughts, keep that beautiful, complex, very human brain of yours curious and critical. Until next time, this is Theodore signing off. Stay savvy, stay skeptical, and above all, stay mentally healthy.